Hey everyone, welcome to another video with Blocks Builder. And in today's video, we're going to look at how we can implement Scroll Spy into our Blocks project. Now, today's tutorial um, may feel a little bit advanced for some users, uh, but I'll walk you through it. Um, I will look at some of the documentation in Bootstrap just to show you uh, where I got the solution from and how I implement it. But I will make this project available through a link in the description so you can download it, have a play around and get a feel for how it works. So Scroll Spy, if you're not familiar with it, it allows you to uh, trigger active, active parts of your menu based on IDs as you scroll through a page. And it's perfect for single uh, landing pages like this one here. And as you can see, I've got four menu items up here, blue, orange, red, and green. And each one uh, corresponds to a colored block that I've got on my page. And as you can see, um, the blue one here is at the top. And so the blue uh, link is active. And as I scroll through and I get to the orange one, the orange one becomes active, red, and then green. So uh, it's a really cool feature to have on uh, single landing pages. Right, so let's have a quick look at the documentation with Bootstrap. Now, if we go to the getbootstrap.com website and we can go to the docs options, make sure that you change this to the correct uh, version of Bootstrap you're using. In my case, I'm using 4.6. Uh, and I'm gonna search here for Scroll Spy. Now, there's a whole lot of information on this page, but really all we need to do is scroll down to this um, Menu, uh, this option here called usage and it's going to give us an idea of what we need to make uh, scroll spy work now we need to add two attributes to our body tag as you can see here in this line here one is called data spy and the value is scroll and the other attribute is data target and the value of that uh, attribute is the ID of our navigation and um, in, in a blocks website that is always site hyphen navigation so it's kind of handy and the only other thing that we actually need in this case is um, the JavaScript trigger which is this line here and we can pretty much copy and paste that and just change our target to match our data target up here which is site navigation okay so um, you can head to the documentation, have a look here if you're more inclined like that or you want to learn more about this or how it works. Let's get started, shall we? So here I have my blocks project and um, I've got my uh, four different colored blocks here. And each one of these blocks, I'm just going to run through what I preset up here. Each one of these blocks has an ID relative to its color. So my blue block has got an ID called blue. Orange has got an ID of orange. Red has got an ID of red, you get the picture. Um, the other thing I've set up here, if we come up to File and Project Settings, there is an option here to set Active Link Class. And I have just set an Active Link Class of Active. Now, uh, some, some of you might have found that sometimes when you've got this class here, it doesn't always seem to work. And so what I've found is that sometimes the Active Classes get overridden. And the way around that, I've discovered is um, set your active class there in your project settings. And then in the class editor, I make a class called nav-link.active. nav-link.active. And then I define the styles for my active class. And in this case, I've just got white text and a black background. And I find that by setting up my active class like that, it really doesn't get affected by other classes. It doesn't get overridden. It's quite stable. Okay. Right, the next thing we want to do is have our menu items set up. And so here I have them, blue, orange, red, and green. And so I have disabled the um, built-in menu system and manually put these in. And with, uh, for example, with my blue one selected, you'll see my interaction has been set to navigate to URL. Um, the scroll to target doesn't work if you want to implement scroll spy so we need to go navigate to url and then the url we just want to put our id of the corresponding block that we want to associate with it in this case it's blue and because it's an id we put the hash symbol in front of it so url hash blue 
and our orange one you'll see is navigate to URL hash orange hash red for our red one okay so if we go and preview this we'll see nothing just yet because we haven't implemented our scroll spy and what we need to do if we go back to our documentation here now you remember on the body tag we need to add those two attributes data spy with a value of scroll and data target now it's kind of tricky to add any attributes to our body tag and blocks without using javascript so what i have here is i actually have some javascript that i've already created and i'm going to go to my page settings and my footer and i'm going to put some script tags and I've got some JavaScript that I've already created for this. So I'm just going to paste that in here. And again, this project will be available in the description for you to download so you'll be able to get this code. So basically what this is doing is it's, um, it's a listener that's waiting for the page to load. And then it defines an, a, a variable called scroll area. Now that scroll area is getting the, the body tag. And then all I'm doing is I'm setting an attribute to the body tag, one called data spy with a value of scroll, and then setting another attribute, data target, with a value of site hyphen navigation. So if we go and preview this now, and then we go and inspect, and if we have a look at the code, I select my body tag up here. We'll see we've now got those attributes sitting in our body tag. So we're actually halfway there. The next thing we need to add, according to our documentation, is this line right here. So we can copy and paste this into our page footer. And this is the JavaScript that activates Scroll Spy. So I've come back to my footer. And I'm just going to paste that in here. And I need to change our target to match the same target that Blocks uses, which is site navigation. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in there. All right. Now let's have a preview. As you can see, we have, as we scroll into our view, we get our blue active, we get our orange, we get our red and we get a green. Now, something weird is happening here because actually the top of our block is not triggering at the bottom of our nav bar. And that's because it's waiting until the block gets to the top of our viewport. So what we need to do is create a bit of an offset. So we want our blue one to be active straight away and we want our orange block to activate or become active as soon as it hits our nav bar. So we need to create an offset that is the same height from the top of the viewport to the bottom of our navigation. And we can do that pretty easily. If we come back into our page settings, back to our footer, and thank you Siri for helping me, we're gonna set, uh, define a new variable and um, just going to put it above this one and I'm going to give this variable a name of nav height equals document dot get element by ID um, now what I need to put in here is the ID of my top nav bar now let me just go back to my page here and if I click, uh, select the block that has my navigation, you'll see that I've given an ID of top hyphen nav. So that's what I need to add here. We'll go back. Um, so top nav dot offset height that's grabbing the height so what's that that's doing is it's defining a variable equal to the height of our top nav and then we're going to set a variable called offset and uh, we're just going to actually we don't need that one we're just going to use that variable nav height 
and then we're going to add this offset to our JavaScript here. So uh, we want our target to be site navigation and we want to define an offset. So we put comma offset brackets and then we can put the name of our variable. Okay. Let's have a look. Right, straight away we can see that it's uh, responding to the offset of our navbar here. Straight away our blue one has been um, highlighted as active. We scroll through, the orange reaches the top, the bottom of our navbar. And you can see that our active link changes. Red, green. Great, that's awesome. Now that will be dynamic too, so it's always based on the height of this. So if we change the height of our to no pixel uh, to no padding here, we've made our toolbar our top nav narrower. We'll find that it still works. It triggers when it reaches the block. The top of our block reaches the bottom of the nav bar. Awesome. Now there's one other thing we can do to make this a little bit snazzier. Just going to enlarge that um, padding again. If we click on any of our nav options, we're going to find that it's just going to jump to each one of the colored blocks. What we'd like to do though is set up a nice smooth scroll that when we click on the red, instead of just jumping, it's going to scroll down. And we can do that really easily by adding um, some custom attributes to our nav items. So with the first one selected here, blue we're going to come down to custom attributes and i'm going to add a couple of custom attributes here so i'm going to give my first one a name of on click and i've got some code here all ready to go so on click And on click, what it's triggering is scroll to target and then ID of blue, this. Okay, so if I save that, we go back to preview and we come down to red. If I click on the blue, it's going to scroll to that ID. Awesome. So all we need to do is we need to go through and give each one of these that attribute. And again, all this code is going to be in the project for you to have a look at. Change that to orange. Red. Green. Now we'll just check that all these are working. And somewhere along the line, we have two of them that are wrong. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Scroll to target, red ID. I'm missing uh, ending quote on that one. And so this is probably the same. Awesome. All right, there's a quick tutorial on how we can integrate Scroll Spy into our Blocks projects. Um, great. Have an awesome day.